Local support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV. Hi, I'm Dan Setledge from Arlington Elementary School. Welcome to News 6. With today's first story, here's Corey Cherney. For our first story, today's News 6 visited the site of two-story log cabin, which discovered inside a Finley home. Here's Jamie Hopkins with the story. Thanks, Corey. Hi, I'm Jamie Hopkins, and I'm here with Mrs. Anderson of the Eagle Creek Historical Association log cabin. Mrs. Anderson, when was this log cabin originally built? As near as we can figure, it was built in 1860. Through looking up tax records and property records, we've decided around 1860 and it was built in Finley. What type of people would live here, Mrs. Anderson? It would have been a farm family. Uh, the occupation of the people back then, most people were farmers. And it might have been a land grant of 80 acres or whatever, and they built the cabin on it and the family lived in it then. Mrs. Anderson, can you tell us what's so special about this log cabin? It's special to us because it's, it's to preserve our heritage. Mrs. Anderson, this wool looks kind of dry. What kind of wood is it? Well, the logs are uh, oak logs and walnut logs for the most part. Are there any other houses like this in Arlington? I don't think so, Jamie. Bill, can you tell us about this part of the house? Yes, this, this is a stone fireplace, and the stone comes from an old uh, cabin that's set around here that was made out of stone and we've carried it up here and we made it into this fireplace. Up above the fireplace is a bunch of nails that we recovered out of the log cabin when we was tearing it apart. These nails were all handmade. The iron sticking out on the side here they hung their pots on. This has a beehive oven and the side of it is where they did their baking of their breads and their pies and their cakes. Okay kids, what we got here is the notch that holds the cabin all together. These notches are made so when it rains, the water runs out of the cabin and not in it. Uh, some of these logs, like this one right here, would probably weigh around 900 pounds. And the big one up here would probably weigh a ton and a half or 3,000 pounds. Thanks, Mrs. Anderson, and good luck adding on to it in the future. Thanks for coming, Jamie. Back to WBGU. Today's News 6 is produced by the 6th grade class of Arlington Elementary School. Arlington is located approximately 8 miles south of Finley, Ohio and has a population of about, of about 1,000. Going fishing is a popular form of relaxation. Today for our next story, News 6 visited Ray Carey who not only loves to fish but makes fishing rods. Here's Lucas' song with a story. Thanks Chris. I'm Lucas' song with Ray Carey of Ray's Rods. Ray, how long have you been in the business of making fishing rods? Lucas, I had, uh, back in 1946, I had a fishing rod that I broke a guide on. And I couldn't find anybody to fix it. So after reading a couple of magazines and a couple of books, I decided to fix it myself. Then after that, somebody else had a broken rod and a broken guide, so I fixed that for them. And it just kept mushrooming until finally I was in the business. Ray, what are your rods made of? Back in the beginning, back in 1946, when I first started, they were made out of bamboo. Then we had uh, steel rods. And after steel rods, we wound up with fiberglass rods. Next came graphite, the graphite material uh, that goes into most of the uh, rods today. About how long does it take to make a fishing rod? It's going to vary according to the rod. Some rods you can do rather quick, others it takes quite a while. It also depends upon what you put on the rod. But in most cases, to build the rod from scratch it takes about 10 hours, and then you've got to put a finish over top of the thread. So we're talking about close to four or five days. 
Ray, what is the farthest distance to you have shipped one of your rods? I'm not real sure how far it is, but that was to Vienna, Austria. Why should people my age fish? I think everybody should fish. Uh, the younger you start, the better off you are. It's one of the best family sports that you can find. Thanks for having us, Ray, and for showing you, us all your fishing rods. It's been a pleasure. I want to thank you for coming. Come back sometime, okay? Okay. Back to WBGU. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to travel back in time? Today's Kids View question discovers where the sixth graders of Arlington Elementary School would go. Hi, my name is Randy, and today's Kids View question is, if you can go back in time, where would you go and why? Hello, if I could go back in time and why, I would probably go back to Venice, Italy to see Leonardo da Vinci paint the Mona Lisa. If I could go back anywhere in time and why, I'd go back to 1988 to see Barry Sanders, the best running back in the NFL, get his Heisman Trophy. If I could go anywhere back in time and why, I'd go back to 1981 to see the Buckeyes win the Rose Bowl because I love football. So I can see them. For our last story today, we, lear we learned what it is like to work with sheep. Here's Emily Metzger with the story. Thanks, Mike. Hi, I'm Emily Metzger, and I'm here with Joe Metzger. Is it difficult raising sheep? Not really. It just takes a little bit of knowledge, and you just have to gain knowledge as you do more of it. You have to uh, practice good habits, just like you do for human beings. Make sure they get the right kinds of food and plenty of water. What's the difference between a lamb and a sheep? The biggest difference is the age. A lamb is something that is really young, and just born and probably in the first uh, six months of its life. And a sheep is an older one, usually from one year on. Why is a baby sheep wool black? They're black because when they're born, the wool has not turned white yet. So you, in a process over the next uh, three weeks, six weeks, they'll begin to turn white and the wool appears in, in the white color that everyone's used to. Can you tell us what kind of foods they eat? A sheep's diet consists of corn, oats, and a lot of hay. They get grass in the summertime. They, they too, have to have the same nutrients humans do, so we have to uh, make sure they get a well-balanced diet. Do they have to be vaccinated? All our lambs are vaccinated in the first three days of their life. Uh, most of them are given between five and six shots in inside of that first three days. Who exactly is Classic 100? Classic 100 was the original ram or father of all the sheep that we have. How many years does a sheep usually live? A sheep is uh, normally going to be in production for us about eight years. Why sheep? Why do you raise sheep instead of any other kind of animal? When my brother and I were younger, we got involved in the sheep business and we just liked it really well. We do have other animals, but I, I would guess we like sheep the best. Thanks for having us today, Jeff. We had a good time. I'm glad the sixth grade came to visit. We did not have a bad time. Back to WBGU! Thank you for joining us today. Tune in next week when Columbus Grove visits News 6. Have a great day. Local support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV.